Oh, hello, everybody. Good day, good day. Janet, Brandon, Sassy, brown coat cow. That looks good. What are you eating? How are you, Mr. Martins? I'm good. Wow. Looks good. Oh, yeah. It's like just a charcuterie tray my wife, uh, Rebecca, made. Ah, perfect. Here we go. Aaron, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. How's everybody doing? Doing good so far. I think we're waiting to let everybody in. Um, I don't know if anybody can hear me or not. I can hear you. Okay. I can. Awesome. Um, Aaron, hang on one second. You want me to pop out? Oh, no, no, no. You're fine. I think, I think you're okay as long as you're good. You should be fine. I'm going to send a chat and just make sure everybody is in. So just take a moment. Let me start my video. Where is everybody? Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys. I was going to say, is everybody in? Awesome. I was going to say, we'll, we'll wait a few minutes and <laughs> later do let everybody come in. Some of you folks were talking when I first came in to join the meeting. I apologize. I needed to get something set up. If I bumped anybody off, I apologize for that. That was on me. <laughs> no worries. No worries. It's fine. It's it's perfect. That, that's okay. So, Aaron, I wanted to thank you for joining us for this event, too. Uh, we're, we're honored to have you here, my friend. Well, I'm honored to be here and share it with you. I know everybody would, uh, would maybe rather be actually a metropolis, but... You know, we make do, and well, that's true. That's very true. Uh, I'm going to ask everybody uh, when you come in, if you don't mind, uh, please uh, mute your microphones, except for you, Aaron. Uh, we had somebody earlier that apparently their kid was playing their record or stereo in the back, and it was getting a little annoying. It's like you know, right? Yeah. She is my I'm, 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 I'm sure whatever uh, Rod, 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 those, those women were, were super fly fine. So you need to have it during a Superman conversation. So. <laughs> well, Aaron, everybody, I was going to say, um, thank you again. Thank you for having us. Uh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Is everybody staying healthy and not going too crazy? Actually, I think this is getting everybody a little bit, a little bit of sanity. I think everybody was looking forward to Metropolis after all that's happened. And I think, a lot of folks were looking forward to this weekend, and then things went kablooey. And it's like I said, that sweet little thing called 2020 happened, and everybody just everybody's plans just kind of went kablooey. So <clears throat> 2020 been crazy. Definitely not like perfect vision. What's up, Carlin? That's true. Hey, Kristen. Oh, I was gonna say if Aaron sh shouts you guys out, you you can unmute and say hey. That's cool. <laughs> Brandon, you're so stoic. I thought you were frozen there for a second. <laughs> yeah, that's. It's about nap time. Hey, good. Oh, boy. <laughs> Aaron, good to see you, man. Good to see you too, Carlin. How you been? Hanging in there like most of us. That's right. It's all we can do, right? Yeah, about two months of quarantine, hanging at the house. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. Guys, I tell you what, we don't have a lot of folks. Why don't, why don't you guys just go ahead and unmute? Go and say hello to Aaron, and we'll start start the interview. Hello, Miss okay. Sassy. Yeah, go go ahead and unmute and just say hey. Hey, Aaron. Hey, hey Aaron. Aaron. Say hey, hey. Hey, Aaron. Aaron, I was going to say you got a lot of Aaron. fans tuned in for you today. <laughs> Watch out, buddy. Young fans. Very young fans. Everybody good? Yeah, everybody's good, excited. Got your questions ready? Oh, Aaron, if you don't mind, we're going to be recording it for some folks who can't make it to this event. Uh, if you don't mind us, uh, we're just going to post it just so folks can catch what they missed. Absolutely. That'll be $100,000. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be with a couple of thousand myself, but, you know, if you want to be dirty about it. <laughs> of course. Record away. Hey, Mark, how are you? Good day to see me. Good day, good What's day. Happening? What's happening? You know, not much. Just relaxing in the California sun. Everybody have nice weather, I hope. I see you now. Now I know hey. who you are. 
seven, bro. Except for the occasional rain. Yeah, well, that's good for the plants and the grass. You got to mow. You got to mow. <laughs> got to mow. If it rains. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. Hey, Mark. What has anybody learned a new skill during this quarantine? Mm. Yes, I have not learned. I've been learning Grubhub. Grubhub. <laughs> I, I've learned how to use them very well. <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> Janet, what was your new skill? I've learned how not to kill my kids. That's always a good skill to learn. Yeah. Fourteen and twenty, you know. Oh boy. <laughs> I was both girls. Oh, so oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Don't raise your Don's low. You learn to shave without water. <laughs> oh, there you go. Ooh. You, you just hope you don't grow it too long. Then you're just pulling it. I was gonna say, See, I haven't been quarantined. Still give her the body, so if you need them, just just in yeah. case. Right. I learned patience. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, we have to learn that. I learned Zoom. I learned. Invested I learned in Zoom as well. You did? Oh yeah, we all learned Zoom. Time. Tell you, uh, I learned I should have invested in it about a year ago. Yeah, <laughs> I think we all oh, learned that one. Uh, Aaron, mom says hello. Hello, mom. Hi, Aaron. How are you? I'm great. How about yourself? I'm. Fantabulous. I'm great every time I get to spend time with Bassy. <laughs> there you go. That's wonderful. Uh, I think going back and investing in Zoom and Grubhub, either one of those would be good investments. And yeah, Grubhub, Postmates, any one of those is is, is fantastic. Did anybody tune into the um, the co uh, the Comic Con we did live? What was it called? The the Internet Con or something like that? IndieCon? We did it with uh, uh, myself and Jeff and Jack and Sarah. Oh man, no! Yeah. It was all, it was posted. Where where was it posted? Uh, well, I had it on my Facebook that I was you know that we were doing it. You didn't accept my friend request, so I didn't get to see it. I did. did I <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I am kidding. I was like, wait a second. I thought I did. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Um, Hello, Stephanie. I've been going to work every day, so <laughs> nothing yeah. changed over here. Wait, you didn't uh, get uh, quarantined? Not not lockdown, not quarantined. I'm an essential worker. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, thank you. And how was that? It's interesting. I work in the steel industry, and our numbers only took a very slight hit. A lot of our customers were still open and working, even when the governor of New Jersey shut down non-essential construction we were still pretty busy though half our staff was working from home but i wasn't uh, i got to go yeah. to work every you day he is i am the only person who does my job which is the billing <laughs> oh well that's very important and it's good i you know you probably appreciate it actually going in mm -hmm. when everybody well, else was not having some of my coworkers around <laughs> around and probably traffic was a lot lighter or I'm not sure how far your yeah, commute is. A 20 minute commute turned into a 12 minute commute. Gotta love that. I got to sleep in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm gonna grab water. One sec. Okay. I was gonna say while you're in the, the room, uh, look, you, still here. are there any of the guys here who, uh, who have not, are not familiar with them? I mean, it sounds like you guys have had a chance to talk to them previously. Um, I didn't know how many of you are familiar with how he got Superman Return or Superman the movie and also was in um, mm -hmm. the Man of Steel. So this is my first time seeing okay. him ever. I was I've actually been fortunate really? enough to meet Aaron twice. Okay. I was going to say if it's like old home week, I was going to let you guys just kind of visit and talk, but we'll, we can, we'll start the interview in just a minute. But uh, Andy's got some great stories. You guys will love it. Thank you for that enthusiasm. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, while he's away, guys, who here didn't miss their commute at all? I got about, I, I mean, good, no traffic. I got a 45 minute round one way. So I've only filled up my gas three times since being out of work. 
I, I, I literally yeah. picked up two hours a day. It was great. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of in the same boat. I've been working from home. My commute into Boston is usually like well over 60 minutes. So I got um, a promotion and no longer care about money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be sad when I have to go back to the 20 minute commute. <laughs> Mine's well, well over an hour normally, so it's been great working from home. We, I've already got that back in Memphis. It's, we're, we're almost fully reopened now. I'm talking to Aaron. You want to say hi to Aaron? Yeah, I'm not telling him about Jason. Okay, well, this, this is Lorna. This is Aaron. Come over here. This is Hello. Aaron. He played baby Superman. On in the movie with Christopher Reeve. How Hi, are you? There. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. Good. Glad to hear. Yeah. Um. I have some information I will tell you. What is that? Is that okay? Yes, you can share your information. Um. I heard that um Jason uh, Sander was an extra in the first Superman movie with Christopher Reeve. Yes. I heard that as well. I never was on set, but I did hear that. He was the in the, in the market ship. Okay. okay, but I didn't know you heard that. That's okay. okay. Well, he was there too. It was nice. Okay. Nice to e meet you. <laughs> I like nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Bye. Oh, bye. Here's a little something to share with you guys. Oh, we can't say it. I got to take my screen off. Hold on. Let me take that crazy virtual background off. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, I love that picture. There you go. That's, that's, that's the original picture in the frame. Wow. Hold it up one more time a little closer, please. That I took. That Somebody's doing the screenshot. Uh, uh, that was uh, that was in the lunch tent on Superman three. Goes to show you how humble he was. Mm. Aaron, while we were out of the room, we were doing a little bit of chatting, and there are some folks who are not aware of how you got Superman the movie. And I was going to ask if you would mind sharing that story with us. And sure, absolutely. So um, there was a big ad kind of on the radio. I was in Calgary where I lived, Alberta, Canada, and they were you know made this announcement they're having a big casting call for this big movie that they were filming. Um, so we didn't hear it, but my aunt heard it. So she called my mom and said, they're having this big thing. They're looking for, you know, a three-year-old and a six-year-old. I have an older brother who's three years older than me. Why don't you guys go, you guys should go down. So my mom got us, washed us up, took us down to this big hotel, this big cattle call downtown. Um, we went into one room, met the casting director and they looked at pictures. They talked to us. Excuse me. They said, okay, go outside and wait. We went out, went another holding room, waited. Uh, then they took us in to meet with uh, Pierre Spangler. I don't think um, Donner was there and uh, some of the producers. And that's how it was. I ended up looking like Christopher Reeve did when he was three. And my brother looked like him when he was six. And so we got <laughs> Uh, there were, they hired three of the parts, kids of the part that I played, um, cause you can't work long and they never know how a three year old's going to react. And I was actually the second number two. They had one that was their first kind of first choice. Um, but he didn't work out so well. And I kind of was willing to do anything that they wanted me to do and was great on set. And they, uh, and many of you know, but those of you that don't know, they did a, um, photo shoot like a montage of Clark Kent growing up so a three-year-old a six-year-old a nine-year-old a 12-year-old and they were going to do if you've if you've seen the omen you know how Donner did like a kind of montage so they were going to do a montage of photos of baby Clark Clark Kent growing up and so my brother was in that as a as one of the six-year-olds but they ended up cutting that so you know he never he never made it uh, but I do, I, I think I have, let me see, I have, don't have any of those um, photos on me, but I have um, some other cool stuff, which I will show you guys later that you uh, haven't seen. Nobody's seen it, actually, so you guys get a little sneak peek at some memorabilia I have. Now, I was gonna awesome. Say 
Well, now, I was going to say, I, I had the pleasure of interviewing you for Back Issue Magazine. And for a three-year-old, you had some very vivid memories of being on set. Yeah. And I, I would love for you to tell them about, um, about the, working with uh, Phyllis and Glenn, because you had some good stories about Phyllis especially. Yeah, I, um, it's, everyone's always amazed at how much I remember being, you know, three, but I, I really do have vivid memories of three and nothing till I was about five or six. But, um, you know, I, one of the fondest memories I have is with, you know, Phyllis and that hug that I give her around the neck in the scene wasn't scripted. It just, I just did it. I just, you know, um, she was just the sweetest, most caring, kind lady there was. Um, and so I, that time I just felt like giving her a hug around the neck. Um, so I, I remember that. I remember um, Dick Donner used to let me talk into his walkie talkie all the time, um, which as a three-year-old was, was a lot of fun and um, carried me around. And I have pictures and also uh, the stunt guys. And I remember this, they, are, they would throw me like in the air and I was flying like this from one stunt guy to the next stunt guy. And they actually have pictures. That was gonna be part of the montage too. Um, so I remember that. And a special memory I have, and there's pictures of it, is actually me sitting or standing, uh, you know, in the capsule and uh, Dick Donner just kind of, he's leaning back kind of like this, just chatting to me about, you know, what it would it be like and this is a thing and you just, you come from this strange place and you land in this strange world and, and what do you think you would think of and um, that's kind of how he directed me. It was never, okay, go here, stand there, do that. You know, there's obviously part of that to get the right shot, but most of it, and that's just how he was as a director, was how would you react? Um, and, you know, and so there's that. Uh, Glenn Ford, I remember a little bit. He, he didn't like working with kids or animals. So when you have a, a, a three-year-old that um, every time, you know, the line is said, he doesn't have any family, and then a three-year-old looks up and goes, yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> needless to say, he wasn't too happy. So that's a little blooper I have. I'm sure many of you have seen that is, and I remember that why I said, yeah, I do, is because I felt guilty because my parents were literally five feet from me. So I didn't, I felt bad that, you know, they're saying I don't have any family. I'm like, yeah, I do. They're right there. I love them. They're, I have family. Yeah, I do. And so that's when Phyllis Thaxter would say, not around here anyway. Um, so, you know, I remember that as well. And that's a cute blooper. That's yeah. so adorable. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was funny. Um, and then, you know, being on my toes, I remember um, at the end of the day telling my dad how sore my arms were, uh, you know, from standing, holding them up. Um, so yeah, it was it was great, you know. Who would have who would have? And I had no idea what Superman was. I don't even think my parents really did um, back then. And you know, I don't think anybody knew what a special movie we were making was and what it was going to turn out to be, and how it's transgressed so many generations. I can't think. Well, there are a few, I'm sure, but another movie that multiple generations can sit around and watch and everyone enjoy, you know, mm -hmm. and pa parents not have to worry about, you know, reaching over to cover their, their kids' eyes or plug their ears for a special scene or something like that. <laughs> well, that's one thing I did want to ask you about. Um, like I said, being three years old, um, when, when did it hit you? Oh my God, I'm, I'm in Superman the movie. I, I'm in this iconic film. Well, what, what age were you when that hit you? Um, to be completely honest, it really sunk in and really started to, to mean something when I, I started doing um, these conventions. You know, it was, it was rough as a kid. Kids are mean, I, you know, especially being naked. You know, you get made fun of a lot and that sort of stuff. Um, but really, when I started meeting all of you and hearing stories of, of how much it meant and uh, it's really when it hit and when I really, you know, appreciated it more. And, uh, and then when I heard back from Chris, when he had his injury, I was working on a Western called Lonesome Dove and every, most of the crew had worked with him on, a, on another movie he did. I think it was Black Fox. And uh, so we all sent him a card and then I kind of, you know, wrote, you know, from baby you 
And he responded and wrote back to me and uh, said, you know, thank you for being part of such a special movie. Um, so that kind of clicked something there. But then, you know, like I said, just, just meeting all the fans and hearing the stories of, of what it meant and um, how uh, special it was to them, you know, well, it really kicked in. Well, I was going to say, when we were first putting all this together and we were bringing guests together and everything, we, we were getting a, a lot of excitement. Well, we got this person. That's great. We got that person. We got Aaron. Everybody's like, oh, my God, you got Aaron? This is going to be fantastic. This is going to be awesome. So wow, we, we I appreciate a lot of that. Excitement. Good. Now, I appreciate of, that. I was going to say, speaking of Christopher Reeve, uh, you you have a very unique uh, experience. You, you did Superman the movie, but then you ended up being cast in Superman 3 as well. And I, I know that's where the photo was taken at with you, you and Chris at the lunch. Right. Show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, I, and obviously Superman 2, you know, is a flashback scene. What's up, Billy? How are you, sir? Um, yeah, so it, it was, you know, Superman, Superman 2, then cast in Superman 3. I was in Calgary and I was doing, you know, a lot of commercials. I was a local kind of kid to go to, you know, that they didn't have to worry about going over time and, you know, not being uncooperative. And so it was, they were looking for this kid in the photo booth. And then um, they didn't really know at the time the connection uh, between it until they kind of saw a resume and that. And then it was like, it was perfect. So that was the first time I met Christopher Reeve was on set. And I remember shaking his hand and my hand disappearing into his hand as, as I shook it. Because um, wow. he was just, wow. you know, he was just this big, man and his big spirit as well um gentle kind um very professional um you know definitely into character and, and into the role and had a huge responsibility um but then that picture i showed you at lunch you know that's that's him another star of the show would have his limo pull up right to his trailer literally so there was just enough room for the door to open and that he could get in without having anybody see him or have to talk to anybody uh yet chris would come out into the tent and eat with you know crew the extras um you know everybody i was gonna ask i don't think i asked you this when we did our first interview did chris know who you were at that time did he know that you had been uh, uh baby cal in um, the first movie yeah he did yeah, they, they let him they let him know and, and, and they told him, especially in the tent he knew. And we actually I sat down and we talked and we you know, we joked about it and um he kinda gave a gave a smirk about, you know, um being naked and thank you for representing him well. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. So um I have a question. Sure. Um I only have like about twelve minutes left um before I gotta get going for the evening. Um but so, Aaron, uh, this doesn't have much to do with Superman besides the fact that I, by the fact that you are, uh, you're attached to someone who inspires me, you know, Superman. Um, woo, as I drop my cell phone. Woo, and there goes my Zoom. Can you guys uh -oh. still hear me? Oh, there hear we you. go. Yeah. There we go. Um, okay, for working really? out, I love the marathons that you, or not the marathons, but the, like, the mud. The Spartan races? Yeah, and all of that. What, how I struggle with um, making myself do something good for me. So I, I struggle with working out. I struggle with uh, cardio and just exercising. What motivates you? How do you continue doing it? How do you keep fighting to keep on going when you don't feel like it? Um, goals. It's plain and simple. You know, I, I've been an athlete all my life. I was a, a junior Olympic gymnast and that sort of thing. Um, and so it's just, you got, you have to set a goal and, and commit to the goal. It can't be like, oh, I'd like to work out, you know, cause they often say a goal without a plan is just a wish. Right. So, and then a, a plan, you know, a, a goal without a plan is just a wish and a plan without action is just a goal. So. I set a goal, you know, I did those Spartan races. I set a goal. I wanted to do my trifecta and I committed to it. And then I went for it because, you know, once I commit, I have to do something. So it's baby steps. I mean, what's, why do you, why do you think you struggle and why do you want to do it? 
Um, well, for me, it's kind of depression and also giving into laziness. Um, and then, like, during the Superman celebration, we have something called a zombie run, and I don't want to be the last person at the Noel Neal statue. Um, so there's I'm usually some, the last one at the Noel Neal statue. I usually sacrifice myself if I have an asthma attack. <laughs> well, you have an asthma attack. That's different. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, so, so, so let me ask you this, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. If if you're if you're not even gonna commit to try it, you're always gonna be the last person because you're never gonna get there. Well, and so like for the the zombie run, I I'm not the last. And the very first official zombie run in New York that I did, um, I was the last survivor, but I wasn't the, the last one. But I was the last survivor. All my other, you know, I had still had lives left. You could say. Right. And so after that, my goal was like, okay, I don't want to be the last survivor. You know, I don't want to be dead, but I also don't want right. to be the last survivor. And right. so it's working my way up. But when events are canceled, it's like, there goes my whole motivation. Right. So it can't be about that event then, right? It can't be about one specific event that you're doing it for because like you said, then if that gets canceled, it's like, oh, well, what's the point? It's really, for me, it's really a lifestyle. It's, it's my nutrition. Um, you know, it's my exercising daily. I, I have to set a time and I have to exercise and do my workout at the same time every day because that, to me, then creates a routine. If I don't, okay. if I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll, do, I'll work out today before I know what the day's gone by and I'm like, oh, I'm too tired to do it. And I okay. don't, and then one day goes into two. So, so um, you set up like an me, appointment have, for yourself. Yeah, like the gym I go to, which is now they do fantastic Zoom workouts. Um, I'm actually helping coach a lot of the workouts as well, and it's all live and stuff like that. Uh, but at the same time, every day, six fifteen a.m., I'm there. I go to work out, and that's that's what I do. I commit to that. So okay. Yeah. Okay, so setting I, an appointment for yourself. Okay. Set an appointment for, me, for yourself, and that's the time you do it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, uh, Aaron, getting back to uh, Superman 3, I remember you were telling me uh, that movie has a particular, it's a particular favorite of yours because of your dad being in there as well, right? My dad and did anybody else do it, know who else was in it? Your brother. In my family? Your brother? My brother and... Oh, and your mom? My mom. You know who? You know what part my mom played? No. My mom. She was your mom at the photo booth. <laughs> that lady at the photo booth that played my mom was my mom. Wow. And then wow. my dad was one of the guys that rescued, you know, where in that scene, he, uh, Chris changes, Superman changes, goes across in that car, they hit the fire hydrant, the fire hydrant's you know, filling up the car. My dad was one of the rescuers. Okay. And, um, and then sadly, my brother's scene got cut. So after that, he's like, forget it. I'm done with the business. That's two, two movies I've been and I've given cut. Forget it. Now, is that why, is that why your brother's a Spider-Man fan now instead of a Superman fan? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Spider-Man or Batman. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that was, you know, and we were all on set on the same day. So it was, it was great. And, you know, um, that my mom was my mom. Awesome. And like I said, you have that wonderful little scene there with, with Chris. It's really wonderful where he's going through the photos and everything, and he's got that last one for you and everything. And it's just, uh, it's just a nice little scene. It's, it's kind of meta in a way that you've got this, you're in the first film, now you're in the third film, and it's just like, it's a nice little Easter egg for the fans, I think. Yeah, it was, it was great. And that scene, you know, where he does that to my hat? That, again, that was, that was his ad lib. You know? Um, we did it once without it, and then he did it a couple of times doing that, and, and that's the one they liked, and that was with uh, with Richard Lester. Did you guys ever, did you guys get to do like a premiere with that one? I, I didn't know if you had like a premiere with Superman the movie. I didn't know if you had to do it one. Um, I think they did. I, I actually didn't, other than Man of Steel, I didn't go to any of the uh, premieres, okay. believe it or not. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's another interesting fact is other than Chris, I'm the only one to be in the most Superman movies because I was in one, I was in two, both Lester and Donner cut. Then I was in three, and then I was in Man of Steel. Right over. Now, 
Tell everybody about how you got Man of Steel, because that's a great story, too. So, well, I heard they were doing Man of Steel. You know, I think I'd been out of acting a little bit at that point in time, and I thought, man, this could be the last Superman movie. It would be pretty cool to be in the first and be in the last. Um, and I was friends with Jim Bowers, you know, and I was talking to him about it, and he said, why don't you, uh, and I think it was in between agents at that time, he's like, well, why don't you just reach out to Dick? And I was like, really, you think I should? He's like, yeah, why not? So I sent an email to uh, Dick, it went to his assistant. Two days later, I got a response. Next day, I got a call from Dick. Um, How are you? Uh, this is great. Yeah, no problem. I think it's a great idea. I'll go ahead and uh, send me your stuff, resume, blah, 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 photo. I'll send it to uh, Zach. And uh, sure enough, week later, I get a call from casting saying, you know, um, they got my info. Zach wants to put me in it. They don't know where yet or what, but they're, they're going to write me in. And, uh, you know, that's it. Two months, month later, I hear nothing. Um, and then another email pops up from casting. Yeah, we're doing it. This is the days, you know, um, you'll be going in and you're filming here and, and, uh, sort of thing. They brought me in a month ago, a month prior, just to kind of read, to make sure, you know, I could act. Um, and I read the part of, uh, um, I forget who it was now. Uh, that guy, Chris, I forget his last name, drawn a blank. Anyway, the funny thing is, the funny story is, is... I hadn't been given a script or anything. So I show up on set and, you know, I'm in my trailer dressing room, no sides, or I have sides, but there's nothing in there. I show up, they're, they're blocking the scene, they're rehearsing the scene and no mention of, you know, any lines. And so then we do one more, you know, they do, sorry, they did, they blocked it, blah, blah, blah. The, then they do a rehearsal and then it gets to my line and I'm, it's like crickets. <laughs> and the, Zach looks at me, he's like, that's your, uh, here you go. And I'm like, I, I, what am I saying? He's like, you didn't get, you didn't get your lines. I was like, no. He's like, oh. So I felt like a bit of an idiot there. But uh, so then they gave them to me and everything was fine. But I was like, oh, great. Here's my chance. And I remember meeting Henry. And my first thought was, after talking to him for about 30 seconds, was like, I hate you. And people are like, really? He was a jerk? I was like, no, I hated him because here's this perfect looking specimen of a man with this beautiful British accent. And then he's nice and funny. It was like, it's like everybody got to work to create the perfect human man. And, it, you know, there he is. He was great. And I instantly got the same feeling um, from him that I got from Chris when I first met him. That's what I was going to ask. You were in that unique position to know Christopher Reeve and also know Henry Cavill. I was going to ask about the similarities between these two men. Brandon. I met Brandon as well. Oh, cool. I, I, that, that's something I did not know. I'll tell that story in a bit. Um, it was, yeah, it, it was great. Uh, and Henry really held, he felt real responsible to both keep what Chris did and also, which I think was very important, to make it his own as well. Otherwise, it was just, you know, an impression of Chris doing Superman, and it would never, you know, it would never have worked. Um, so it was, it was great. And then meeting Brandon, I had another day job, you know, when I wasn't acting, because, you know, not all actors act all the time. And I was, uh, I created a bar uh, at The Tonight Show, because Johnny Carson used to have a bar for all the guests. And so I'd started this bar for Jay Leno's Tonight Show and I was running the bar and Brandon um, was on uh, promoting Superman Returns. So Jay brought me on stage. He's like, not only do you guys get one Superman, you get two. Um, and so that's how I met Brandon, was on set of uh, The Tonight Show. Awesome. And then I went to the premiere, he was great too. Really, really nice, really humble, down to earth, still is. As you guys have all known, because you all met him. That seems to be the great thing as far as casting goes. They they seem to find just the, not only the right look, but the right personality as well. And I I, I know uh, reading stuff that Christopher Reeve had read, uh, said, and things like Henry Cavill had said, and Brandon also, there's that sense of legacy. That's that sense of you're part of something bigger than anything else you've ever been a part of before. 
Yeah, and you know what? It, it, it's really weird because now that I'm just, we're talking about it, I'm thinking like, there's Chris, there was Henry, you know, Brandon, um, Mark McClure, Jeff E, Sarah, Jack, Margo, all incredible, down to earth, wonderful people. Michael Rosenboom, same thing. You know, everybody that seems to be associated with this film are nice, down to earth people. And I don't know if it's just a coincidence, if it's Chris guiding in some way, you know, but it's, it's Tom Welling. Uh, that was a funny thing too. I went, I think it was Detroit. Uh, I went to Detroit Comic Con and I was on the plane next to Tom. And he had no idea, obviously, who I was. And I'm sitting, and I look at him, and I go, you realize I was Superman before you were. And he he kind of he looks at me like, who the heck is this guy? And then I told him, like, you're going to Drake Comic Con, so am I. And I told him the story. He's like, get out of here. You just, the naked lifted. I was like, yeah. <laughs> but nice guys. Oh, man. Well, I, think, I think it's just it's like an obligation or something on the casting. It's like, don't hire a jerk. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I guess so. I guess that's what it is. Um, so here's a little, can, I don't know, can you guys see that or no? Do I have to take it out? Uh, yeah, we can see it. So that's, um, it says, thank you, best wishes, Christopher Reeve. That was an autograph I got on the set of Superman 3 from him. And uh, I also have, let's see here. Here is, see if you guys can all see that. If you can't, let me know. So this, I'll read it to you too. Um, Dove Mead Limited, Superman 3, Sunday, August 29th through Tuesday, August 31st, 1982. Um, this was call sheet from Superman 3. Nice. Um, original call sheet with a little map to the farm. Um, here is another one here. This was Superman the movie. This was the call sheet. So call sheet is basically what they send you, what's going to be filmed that day, which scenes are going to be filmed that day. What's up, Mr. Doug? Um, and so you can see, let me try and get this. Can anybody read that? Let's see here. Hold on. Exterior, Clark Kent Farm. And then can you see these names here? Yeah. yeah. Donald Wilkerson. Lord, Phyllis Saxer, Jeff East, Diane Sherry. So this is the cast list, an original cast list call sheet from Superman the movie with all those people's names on it. And then again with the directions, which I won't tell, to yeah. the farm. And look here. So remember I told you guys about the stills montage? Huh? Sorry. Oh, cool. So that was your brother is Travis. My brother's Travis, yeah. And then you can see there the three Clark, or the three H3 Clark Kents. You guys should have started a band, the three, the three Clarks. That would have been cool. <laughs> so there's, you know, there's that. Um, and then I have some other, you know, this is like an original. This is from like the Calgary Sun, the big newspaper there with that scene. There's me and my mom. Nice. Um, I have a contract. The contract I signed with Peter Spangler's autograph, or not autograph, his signature from signing it. Um, let's see what else. I had something else in here. And, you know, I've got, you know, you probably can't see because it's under plastic, but these are all autographs that I got from set. Um, there's, I've got J Jeff East, Phyllis Thaxter. It says, um, to, little to little Superman, best wishes, love Ma Kent, Phyllis Thaxter. Um, I've got one from David Petru. You guys know who David Petru is, right? Um, he wrote The Making of Superman. He was also my stand-in. He was one of the only the smaller people that could fit into the capsule. Um, so he went in there when... It was a light. It was 80, 90 degrees in there with all the lights in there. So they didn't want me in there for, you know, an hour while they were trying to set up the scene. So he would go in there um, to test the opening of the, the lid and all that sort of stuff. Um, 
And then another memory was I was in there for a good five minutes prior to the capsule coming open as they were setting up rolling. And uh, afterwards they cut, great, uh, and that's a print. And they're like, so what did you do in there, Aaron? And I was like, I just sung old Canada. <laughs> I that's something I guess I never really thought about them, them having a stand in for you and everything because uh, I know with the the scene with the truck and everything they, they couldn't have used you the entire time so no I mean uh, there are pictures of me um, I've got like a blue robe on where I'm standing under there just to get the right height uh, that sort of thing and then standing on my tippy toes was it was they didn't get the height quite right, but I went, went under there and I just went up to my tippy toes and Dick's like, that looks great. Let's do it like that. Um, and uh, the stunt coordinator who was literally three feet away um, during the filming was Gene Hackman's brother, Richard. So he was there ready to grab me because there was only one cable holding the truck up. Um, well, I remember Jeff telling me about the stunt where he was supposed to be going across the train. And yeah. so that was terrifying for That was Harry as well, yeah. You know, keep in mind, it was, you know, 78, 77 when they filmed it, so. Yeah. Well, uh, a lot of folks, I, I know a lot of folks nowadays, I've heard some kids talk about, well, it's a good movie, but the special effects aren't as good. And it's like it was groundbreaking for 78. I mean, oh, yeah, you said yeah. Star Wars the year before, and right. Superman took it up to the next level in so many ways. Right. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Any questions? Aaron, you still there, bro? I'm here. Hey, listen, have you ever produced a film of your own, even if it's a short? Did you freeze Canon films a long time ago. But have you produced your own film? Yeah. Um, I, I did. There, uh, it, we never did anything with it, but we. It was a great script. A friend of mine, who was a director, actually um, directed a lot of TV, directed a lot of Beverly Hills 90210s and other stuff. He wrote it and just kind of buried it, and it was a fantastic script. So um, I just wanted to do something with it. So you know, we we produced a um, couple scenes from it and that. Um, but other than that, nothing, nothing real. Uh, I, I'd like, I'd love the movie making, you know, business in general and, you know, behind the scenes and that sort of stuff. Wow. Well, given the proliferation of like things like YouTube and the internet and so forth, do you think Hollywood's going to totally change? What's going to happen? I mean, it, it already has. So definitely, especially with, you know, um, the pandemic and all that sort of stuff. Um, it, it's going to keep evolving and it should keep evolving. Um, and I think the biggest evolution that, you know, I've noticed, and I'm sure everyone else has, is the growth of independent um, features and shows and all that sort of stuff. You know, I, I noticed the big change when, you know, I was working my way up and doing stuff and, uh, you know, doing a lot of guest stars and leads and that sort of stuff. And then it shifted. You would get a lot of movie stars that were tired of the movie star game, the movie game, and wanted to have a family life and wanted to just settle down. So they started doing TV. Sure. That was the biggest shift in the, in, the, in the business that's, I think, kind of propelled how everything else has gone uh, from there. Right on. Great question. Anybody else ask away? I don't get offended. Yes, down there. I'm going to say candy, but I know it's not candy. No, it's not Candy. It's Travis, actually. Yeah, um, <laughs> hey, um, That's my brother's name. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned indie film. Have you ever done anything with Kevin Smith or ever been approached by him? It seems like uh, he's a celebrity celebrity. It seems like uh, he might be interested in someone like you for one of his projects also. Yeah, you know, I've, I've, I've talked to him um, about some stuff, and it's, you know, Look, in the business, you have to be your biggest promoter as well. And just being honest, that's probably my biggest downfall is I just don't talk about myself. I don't like to promote my, you know, whatever, go after. It's kind of like, if they want to, me to do something, then, you know, they know how to get a hold of me. If they don't, they don't. I'm not going to, you know, force myself. So it kind of was like, yeah, well, he wanted to do something. I think it'd be great because he's a Superman fan, you know, comics and all that sort of stuff as well. Um, 
I didn't follow through probably as much as I should, and he was too busy, and so um, nothing ever came of it. I mean, I know he has like 12 podcasts. I'm uh, still waiting for you to maybe appear on one of the podcasts, too. I figure that would be a, a first step, maybe. Well, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll just reach out. Aaron, I was going to ask, have you ever been uh, perched to do a Gilbert Godfrey's podcast? No. No, I haven't, no, haven't been. And, and I think, again, part of it is just, you know, I don't self-promote. I don't have a publicist, you know, and that sort of thing. Um, I'm sure if I self-promoted more and did stuff, you know, People love the Superman, not so much, you know, my part or whatever, but just having somebody from the Superman franchises come on and, and talk about a bit about it, I'm sure, you know, would be great for everybody. Well, like I said, talking to you for back issue, again, for three years old, you had some very good memories. And that's the kind of stuff that I know Gilbert eats up. Plus the connection with Superman 3, the connection with Man of Steel. I mean, this is... This is the kind of stuff that he would eat up, I think. And, right, I well, you know, and the story everybody knows about how they got me to come out naked. You know, it wasn't just I was like, here you go. You know, it was, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they had to bribe me. And, you know, there was candy and soda and gum involved and all that sort of stuff, which, you know, which is a funny story. They, uh, For those of you that don't know, you know, I was shy. I was like, I don't, you know, there's 20, 30 people, you know, I don't want to just come out naked. And it was like, well, you know, um, you, here's a six, you want a six pack of Coke? I was like, no, you know, do you, you want this? No, what do you want? Um, I like gum, you know, and there's a picture of Dick Donner's got a pack of dentine. He's like, here, perfect gum. And uh, I was like, no, they're like, no. They're like, I'm like, I want juicy fruit. And Dick's like, anybody got any juicy fruit? And they happen to have a pack of juicy fruit. They gave me a pack of juicy what? fruit. And then I was like, okay. You know, and that was kind of it as well. So, and a uh, snow globe. I think actually I have a snow globe that Dick bought me when they were filming in Banff. Um, and uh, I still have that. All the water and stuff is gone, but, you know. Oh, man. I'll be honest with you. If it were me, I think I'd, I think I'd have to have more than a snow globe and a pack of juicy fruit. That, that's just me. <laughs> I don't know. Again, they, 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 they for free. <laughs> you know, it, it was great when I was, you know, dating in my uh, late teens, early 20s. I was like, come on, you've already seen me naked. <laughs> <laughs> like you're, obli you're obligated. I got to see you naked now. So come on, you know. That's right. It's good for the goose. I'm from Canada. It's a law up there. So, you know, uh, American yeah. girls, they don't know any better. So, right. Well, I, I did want to ask uh, I know, like I said, being in Superman 3, Man, um, Man of Steel and all, um, one of the great things with producers nowadays is that they love doing these kind of Easter eggs. Like I said, getting actors who have been in previous uh, productions for different heroes and such. Is there anyone in the Superman mythos you would love to tackle? Is there any role in the Superman mythos that you would like to do yourself? You get the opportunity. Uh, Lex. Right there's a, there's a, um, a, f a film. It's actually independent uh, that we're kind of working on. And it's been going on for a few years, Superman vs. Doomsday. Um, and you guys know Josh Bothinghouse, right? Uh -huh. he's, he's, cast, he's cast in it as, uh, as Superman. And I'm playing Lex in it. Awesome. Um, so it's just a case of, you know, get it going. But, um, that's, you know, I love playing the villain. Uh, I, you know, I did a, a TV movie, a number of them. I did one with Scott Foley and I played a, uh, not a very nice guy that everybody thought was nice at first in that. And that's probably one of my favorite roles I ever got to play. Um, so I'd love to play Lex. That would be my first. And then Jimmy Olsen would be my second, just for the comedy. Yeah. Cool. Well, I was going to say, uh, we're, we're approaching 745 right now. I was going to ask, is there anyone else has any questions? This is a golden opportunity. Carlin, are you lit up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Me neither. Hey, Carl, can you do me a favor? Can you type it in the chat? Because anybody else having a hard time hearing him? Yeah. I can't hear him. Go ahead and type it in the chat. While he's typing, is anybody else having any questions? If they ever bring back it. Tabletop, I'd love to see Aaron on there. What's that, Kristen? If they ever bring back Tabletop, I'd love to see you on oh. there with Will. 
you. That'd be fun. Janet, yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I was wondering what is your most favorite fan interaction that you had? All of us. You know, <laughs> it's going to sound cliche and, and cheesy, but I, I don't have one specific um, interaction that stands out. I'm really sincere and serious that meeting everyone and hearing all of your stories and what Superman means to you, experiences. It was the first time, first movie I saw with my parents. It was that, you know, are in are incredible to me and they really do mean a lot because they're all different you know everybody has a different everybody has a different story everybody has a different meaning to them um and so i love hearing those you know and i try my best when i go to these conventions to talk to everybody and hear the stories and i really try to personalize my signature and what i write on everybody's picture to something that ties them, you know, to me that I know about them. Um, uh, uh, because you guys put so much time and effort and money, you know, in, into coming that I really want it to be as special to you as it is special to me. Um, so as cliche as that is, I'm sorry if it's, if it's cliche, but <laughs> one specific, no, I like it. you know, um, fan, fan interaction. All right, let me read Carlin's here. Um, Cheap day, here's some going. Yeah, it's day. When was the Lex rule planned? The, the Lex rule has been planned for like three or four years. Um, the person that was kind of doing it wrote it, got sick. Uh, he's a magician, he went on tour. Um, and then it came back, and we were starting to get back into it. And then, you know, pandemic happened. So it's been kind of planned. Um, there was like three different schools we wrote that, you know, because I'm executive producing it as well, um, that we kind of, we, we've been working on. So it, it will happen. Um, we just, what, me, it's got to be right. Was the magician Striebler? Morgan yeah. Striebler? He's a great guy. He's great, yeah, yeah. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. We can hear you much better, yeah, Carlin. Okay, that is really weird, but okay. So yeah, so that's I, I changed screens quite literally. That's all I did. Uh, yeah, that was weird. Anyone else questions? What's the experience like when you watch the movie today? Is it kind of like a? Do you get memories of it being there, or can you like let yourself out of that experience and kind of enjoy it as a movie? Like, what's it like for you? Well, first off, I can never really watch a TV show or a movie without being cynical about it because I know exactly what's going on and you know what's behind the scenes where so to what I can't the, the I have kids and watching it with you know them is for for the first time was the best thing I've ever done you know um so I watch it now and it's you know it's neat and I different memories flashback every time you know I watch it um so, and same with Superman three, you know, it's fun to watch my kid, you know, kids get a, get a, a laugh at it. Now that, that's an interesting question. When did your kids realize that's dad on the screen? That's, that's pop up there with Superman. Um, I think a friend of uh, ours mentioned it to them and that was the first time they heard about it. And then, uh, uh, you know, they, they got a trip at, you know, telling people at school, you know, my dad's Superman. And then the other kids are like, yeah, so's my dad. They're like, no, my dad's Superman. <laughs> so they just, they just think it's funny. That's cool. Well, and that, that is great. I mean, you got something you can share with the kids. You got something to share with the grandkids. And it's, it's, that, it's that family story. It's like great grandfather was Superman. That, that's awesome. Yeah. They, they trip out a lot when they see, you know, like me on – a poster or me on garbage can or, or you know stuff like that I have you know or the bubblegum card have they ever done the conventions with you no I was, I was gonna say part of watching the fan interaction coming watching people come up to your table and all that would probably be really trippy for them I think yeah yeah and it's you know it's uh 
My dog's eating a tree. Um, <laughs> Marcus, stop. Uh, and that just kind of, for, you know, especially when they were younger, I just didn't, I, I just wanted to kind of keep that separate from them as well. And, and you know, um, focus on, on the fans and that sort of stuff. I was going to ask, do anyone else have any other questions or? Anybody want any juicy gossip? I don't have any. Other you can just tell there. us some juicy, juicy gossip. Uh, Jason, group. So. Oh, I was going to say, it depends. What do I have to do to get to get it? That's the only thing. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> juicy fruit. Um, so. I may have some. What's the outside? Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jeff, they had to hide Jeff East out for like two weeks because Diane Sherry's boyfriend was coming into town and Jeff and Diane had a little thing. Um, oh. So they literally like Richard Hackman and they had to hide him out one, you know, for, for two weeks. So there's a little juicy gossip. You didn't hear it from me though. <laughs> I heard you both, both of them play back issue because neither one ever said anything about that. I'm like, I said, what was the gossip? We're like, oh, no gossip happened. And I'm like, of course. I got to yeah. go back and talk about them now. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's a little gossip. I think Jeff's, Jeff's talked about that once, I think, after he visited the hotel bar. Um, and if you guys ever get a chance to talk to Jack about his history and stuff, just, man, it, it, absolutely incredible. The best, other than you guys and meeting you all, the best thing about going to the convention with everybody is sitting back and just listening to Jack and Sarah. Well, now we've got Jack scheduled for tomorrow. If you want to, if you want to join us, you're welcome to. We'd love to have you have you come in for that. Uh, uh, maybe I can. I'll have to see what time. Uh, let's. See, I think we got him for five o'clock. I believe. I'll, I'll, I'll double check the schedule and uh, I'll I'll drop it to you in, in Messenger. Let's okay. Ask Jack about the time um, people didn't get paid. The non. Cool. I was going to say, ask, Sassy, ask him about that story. I was going to say, Sassy, it's at four tomorrow. So you get that. Four o'clock? Okay. Four well, Eastern? That's what I could do. I'm not making it six o'clock Eastern, so it may be four o'clock that time. Central. Well, it's four o'clock my time, one o'clock his time. Okay. Anyway, ask him, that, ask him that question. That's a good one. I, I'm gonna Wait, get what question in my, the time that people didn't get paid? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So ask him about that. Ask him if Richard Donner ever offered him Juicy for two. That, we got to find out about that also. Uh, he's such an incredible man, Dick Donner. I was, I was down here. I booked a pilot. But so a pilot is before a show goes to series. They film a pilot that they pitch like to all the networks, basically, um, or the the network has already bought the pit, bought the pitch, and now they're going to film a pilot to to see how it tests. And I needed because I was Canadian, I needed somebody to vouch for me that why should they hire a Canadian in instead of a, a U.S. citizen? And I that was the first time I talked to Dick Donner since Superman. I just reached out and got his assistant, told his assistant who I was, why I was calling. Assistant said, oh, one second. Dick gets on the phone. Two days later, I had a letter from Dick Donner saying that they should hire me, and I got it. That's awesome. So that's just the type of person he is. Well, all accounts, he's supposed to be a real stand-up guy. So. Yeah, he's great. But then he asked me for Juicy Fruit for doing my favor. So. <laughs> <laughs> Two packs. <laughs> That's right. It's inflation, Dick. It's gone up. It's gonna be three facts now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next time you're in the tropics, you better watch out. There's gonna be juicy fruit. There's gonna be juicy People fruit. People be giving you juicy fruit. There will be. You're, you're gonna need a flipping basket to carry it around. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, do they still sell juicy fruit? I'm, I tell you, I'm gonna have to wear like 40 layers of clothing because every time I get a pack of juicy fruit, somebody's gonna expect a layer to come off. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, what we'll do is we'll sell the juicy fruit and all the money goes to charity. It's like, how, how far are you willing to go? So. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Start bidding. 
I have to go to the gym twice tomorrow now. Aaron, I'll, I'll, Aaron, I'll tell you what. I, I will join you, and for every dollar I get, I will not take off a piece of clothing. <laughs> You're gonna make a, the jersey's going to make a fortune. When the go fund me. Perfect. Yep. Um, well, guys, I, I appreciate you all taking the time to be here and listen to me tell a few stories. I, I, you know, I hope I answered. I hope I gave some um, neat little background. I hope yeah. I, you know, solved your curiosities. I hope I fed your, your questions. You're curious. Um, if you're not, if you know, if we're not friends on Facebook, go ahead and, and for me and I'll accept it. And if you have questions, you know, please go ahead and ask. Um, you know, I often say without fans and that's in anything, entertainment, sports, music, whatever it is, people couldn't do what they do. Um, so you guys you know, are the real heroes and you guys are what allow us entertainers, musicians, sports athletes to do um, what they do and, and all that. So we appreciate you. At least I do. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. I'm going to say give him a big hand. Aaron, thank you very much. Thank guys, you, guys. Yay. Yay. That was my favorite. It's, it's been an honor having you with us, and you, you have a great rest of the day. If you want to join us for Jack tomorrow, please. We, we'd love to have you. You got it. Sounds good. One o'clock, right? Same uh, same bat time, same bat channel? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Super time. Happy. Bessie will be doing Jack's interview tomorrow, so she's going to do that. So. Oh, well, message me. I'll give you some uh, some questions to ask him. You can watch okay. him. I'm not sure, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Uh, have a great rest of your day and a little uh, motivation for Saturday. Is, remember, nothing in this world has meaning except the meaning we choose to give it. So give it a good meaning. That's give deep. It a good you know, whatever meaning you choose to give it is the meaning it'll have, so. Nice. That's right. that words of wisdom from Superman right there, so there, there you, you go. There you go. All right. <laughs> Be well, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Girls. Guys, thanks for, for coming out for the uh, meeting. I hope you guys had a great time. Uh, this wraps up my portion for the day, so I'm going to get ready for tomorrow. But I know there's some other cool stuff going on. I think uh, –